Now, the Prime Minister has repeated his promise that money is no object when it comes to tackling the floods, though he stressed that that pledge applied to the relief effort rather than the open-ended capital costs which could follow. So how much is all this likely to cost and where is that money going to come from? Our economics editor Faisal Islam is here. Faisal. Thanks, Cathy. Even as the floods and storms intensify, the question of how much this is all going to cost is rising up the agenda. The key phrase is money, no object, spoken by the Prime Minister. But what does that mean? Well, here are some of the things that are included. There'll be a £5,000 grant for any affected householder to improve the protection of their property as they repair it. There's a £10 million fund for farmers whose land is waterlogged and affected businesses will get 100% relief on their rates. The reality is that this is small beer in the context of the government's overall budget, but it does give the Prime Minister something to crow about at PMQs. I want communities who are suffering and people who see water lapping at their doors to know that when it comes to the military, when it comes to sandbags, when it comes to the emergency services, when it comes to restoring broken uh, flood defences, all of those things, money is no object. But the more expensive question is how much we spend on preventing floods in the future. Here's the pattern for the last eight years. More spent on flood defences each year up to 2010-11, but then spending drops sharply after the 2010 spending review. That is set against the sharp increase that experts have said would be required to cope with rising levels of flooding. Critically, there was a fundamental change at the time of the spending review in the way government decided whether to go ahead with any particular flood project. In the old system, for every £1 of cost, the Treasury would say that they wanted £5 of quantifiable benefits in terms of alleviating future flood damage. Sometimes individual projects could get away with a ratio of one to one. But new rules to allocate scarcer resources meant that every £1 spent had to generate £8 of benefits from flood damage avoided. Hundreds of flood projects that would previously have been fully funded are now only barely funded. And that has had an effect in badly hit areas like Somerset. The funding gap is meant to be bridged by so-called funding partners, local businesses or cash-strapped councils. If it's not, as occurred for the project to dredge the two rivers in Somerset, the project are not delivered. So when David Cameron says money is no object, does he mean that Britain will develop flood resilience around the country offered by this, the Thames Barrier, which protects against a biblical one in 2,000 year flood, or even the five times stronger Dutch system, which costs four times as much per capita as Britain spends? Well, no. In that regard, money is an object, one in short supply, and increasing flood spending has not been the priority for Britain. Cathy.